In today's video, I wanted to share with you something that I found a couple of weeks ago that showed me that I was completely wrong in my understanding of how butterfly valves work. For the last 15 or 20 years, I've believed that ball valves and butterfly valves are quick opening valves. And as you start to open the butterfly valve, a lot of water gushes through, and that's why we can't use them for control. That is completely wrong. So in today's video, I wanted to show you the butterfly valve characteristic, and for two reasons, it's really interesting. The first is, it shows us why you can't use butterfly valves for control, and it's always good to understand some of the theory behind why something is like it is. But the second thing was, which I found really interesting, is that maybe you can use a butterfly valve for control. So here we have a butterfly valve. This is quite heavy. I probably should have chosen something a little bit smaller for this video. But you can see that as we open the valve and this disc starts to rotate open, we can see how quite a lot of water is going to come gushing through there as that disc starts to open. And I've always looked at this and I've just assumed that this must be a quick opening type of valve. As the disc rotates open, a lot of water comes through. And that's an assumption I've been making for a very long time, which two weeks ago I found out is actually completely wrong. So rather than guess like I have been, let's have a look at the characteristic curve and see exactly how much water actually comes through the butterfly valve as the disc starts to rotate open. In this graph here, we've got five different characteristic curves for five different types of valves. On the x-axis, we have the valve opening position. So when the valve's closed, it's 50% open, the valve's 100% open. On the y-axis, we have the flow through the valve and therefore the flow through the coil. So this green line over here, which I normally call a, a quick opening valve, this is what I thought the characteristic was for a ball valve and a butterfly valve. I thought that as that butterfly disc cracked open, a lot of water came through here. The red line is a linear characteristic where as the valve's opening, it's sort of proportionally or linearly allowing the same amount of water flow through the coil. And this bottom one here, the sort of purple line, this is the typical equal percentage characteristic that we are always looking for. This is the curve that we want that results in good control through a water coil, a chill water coil or a hot water coil. But what I found extremely interesting when I stumbled across this graph, I'd never seen the butterfly characteristic before. And we can see on this orange line, this is the characteristic of the flow rate through the valve and therefore through the coil as this butterfly valve opens. So the two very interesting things here is this part over here, that as our PID loop is increasing from 0% up to towards, let's say around 60%, at around 60%, the flow rate dramatically increases. It just gushes through the valve here, and then stabilizes around here, maybe 80%. So if we were measuring the flow rate through the valve and through the coil, we'd see it sort of follow this curve, and then the water would just gush straight through. That's obviously bad for control, because think about it, if we have a, um, an air handling unit, with the supply air temperature sensor and the chorter valve, as that PRD loop opens, and it's increasing from zero towards that 100%, we'd see the supply air temperature nice and smoothly dropping down as the butterfly valve's opening. Smoothly, the supply temperature is dropping, dropping, dropping. And when the valve opened to around 60% through to 80%, we'd see the water just gush through the valve. And that's obviously bad for control because the PRD loop would see we probably overshoot the supply temperature set point as too much water went through the cooling coil and then the PID loop would back off again. And then it would build up, build up, build up. The water would gush through, would overshoot. It would back off. The PID loop would build up, build up, build up. It gush through and we'd pull back again. And that's typically a control valve hunting. So we'd see the control valve opening, closing, 
opening, closing. And as BMS engineers, typically what we do then is we go and do some tuning, some PRD loop tuning, and we'll widen the proportional band to try and slow that down. But when you have these sort of characteristics, no amount of PRD loop tuning can correct for that water gushing through as the valve opens between 60 and 80%. You can't correct that. And the second part that's really interesting here is that from 0% up to the 60%, the butterfly valve characteristic is very similar to the equal percentage characteristic. So this tells me that if you have a butterfly valve, you can actually reliably control the water flow through a coil as long as you don't go above 60%. That's very surprising to me because I didn't get that at all for, for the last very long time. So I'm not proposing that you would now go and start buying butterfly valves, which are probably cheaper, and using them for to control the water flow through a coil. I'm not saying that because just thinking it through now, if you want to try and do that, you would have to size the butterfly valve to have the design flow rate through the coil at 60% open on the butterfly valve. So that would mean you need to buy a much larger butterfly valve and oversize the pipe so that you could control only to the 60%. Obviously, that's not going to happen. This is like a theory idea. So you wouldn't use this. So why is this so important? If you think about it, in a building, where do you sometimes have a butterfly valve controlling the water flow through a coil? The bypass valve for the chiller's minimum flow control. We do sometimes end up with a bypass valve in the bypass line that we modulate to maintain the minimum flow the chiller's evaporator and stop it tripping on low flow. Now in all modern day buildings we're not putting butterfly valves and that never happens but I think buildings that were installed say more than 20 years ago they did seem to have butterfly valves installed quite a lot in those days and if your BMS that you have now is quite newish and it was upgraded 10 years ago you wouldn't have replaced that valve, you just would have replaced your BMS controllers. So there are a lot of buildings out there with really good building control systems, good building management systems, but they do happen to still have a butterfly valve in the chillers bypass that was installed when the chillers were installed 20 or 30 years ago. So what I'm thinking here is, if you're walking through a plant room and you see chiller tripping problems, and you look up at the pipe there and you see a butterfly valve you could think back to this characteristic curve and think, you know what, maybe if I limited the, the position of the control up to 60%, I could have good control through the chiller's evaporator up to 60%. So in your software program, you've got your PID loop, you could connect the output of the PID loop to like a scaling block, and inside there you could scale that the 0 to 100% output from the PID loop was scaled to zero to 60%, and then that uh, scaling block would connect to your analog output. So as the PRD loop is modulating from zero to 100 to control the flow to the chiller, the analog output, the zero to 10 volt DC signal would just control from zero to six volts. Now, of course, you've got to go and check that at 60% open, you have enough water flow through there to satisfy the chiller. My opinion is that go check that, but it's probably not going to be a problem because I feel that a lot of bypass lines are oversized by mechanical engineers anyway. So it's likely that pipe's too big and the valve too big anyway. So as long as you have good variable speed drive control on your system pressure, it's working really stable um, and smoothly. As the flow starts to drop through the evaporator and you start to open this bypass valve, which is a butterfly valve, you will have, according to this, good control up to the 60% position. So if you are having chiller control problems and you have a butterfly valve, this could be an issue. The water is gushing through after 60%, you're overshooting the set point, the piano is pulling it back, and as it comes back, the chiller could trip if it hunts a little bit through that sort of control range. So hopefully you got a few ideas there. I'm gonna link in the description below two other videos where we have discussed equal percentage, what does it mean, and valve authority, and why the two things are really important. So if you actually got this far through the video, yay. Um, 
and you've got some interest, go and watch those two videos. It'll probably close this loop around quite nicely for you.